بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم السلام علیکم ڈیئر اسٹوڈنٹس آئی ویلکم یو ٹو دا نیکسٹ سیشن آف دا سی ریفریشر سیریز ان دا لاسٹ سیشن آئی آئی گیو یو دا انٹروڈکشن آف پوائنٹرز ان سی وی ڈسکس دا آرکیٹیکچر آف ون ڈی اینڈ ٹو ڈی انٹیجر ریز اینڈ وی ہیو سین ہاؤ وی کین ایکسیس دا ایلیمنٹس آف دوز ریز یوزنگ دا سبسکرپٹ آپریٹر اور بائی پرفارمنگ دا پوائنٹر اریتھمیٹک Excuse me. We talked about the 1D and 2D character arrays as well and finally closed our discussion on array of pointers. All right, gentlemen, today we are going uh, to move it ahead and the main topic for today's session is passing and returning pointers to and from functions. Let us start playing and move on to the terminal and let me show you the famous swap function. If you see this function, we are creating two variables n1 and n2 and we are passing these two variables by value to the function swap. And we are of course displaying the values of those variables before calling the swap function and after calling the swap function. The swap function is over here which receives two integer arguments by value, generates a temporary variable and then swap. Let me compile and execute this program and we see that the swap do not occur. Right gentlemen, to understand this, let me move on to the board <coughs> and, and draw the process stack to make you understand properly. <coughs> we know the logical address space. Over here I am just showing you the stack. At the top we have high address and the stack of course grows down. At the very top we have the command line arguments and environment variables. Environment variables, command line arguments. So these are basically the uh, parameters of main. Let me write it. These are the arguments, command line arguments of the main function <clears throat> that are pushed in the stack in, in, in reverse order. That is, the first argument is arg c, the second argument is arg v, and the third argument is environment variable so they are pushed in in reverse order after that we have the return address this return address is uh, of of the calling function of main then we have the local variables of main local variables of main and if we see over here there are two local variables n1 and n2 let me write it down n1 and n2 and that is it so this is known as stack frame This is a stack frame of main <clears throat> and of course the stack grows downward. This is a situation of the stack once we are over here and once we call this swap function and move inside the swap function there has to be another stack frame over here. Let me write that stack frame as well. We have two arguments num1 and num2 
they are pushed in reverse order num 2 and then num 1 then we have the return address Well, this is the return address of, of this place where the swap function is going to fall back after execution. And then inside, inside this swap function, we have a local variable, local variable of swap function. There is only one that is temp. And the stack is growing down, of course. Well, uh, this is the stack frame. This is a stack frame, of course, of swap function of swap function. This was a stack frame of main function. Now, if we move on to the code, we see that. The swap function swap these variables num1 and num2 so these variables are of course swapped over here but once we fall back in main these two variables are not swapped these two variables are not swapped so that is the issue let me resolve that issue here, where comes the pointers? Okay. Vim swap by pointers. We have the code. Yes, we have the code. So what we do is over here, we pass the two variables by pointer and we swap those. And of course, this is const. This means this variable p num1 is a constant pointer that points to integer data so the data it is pointing to is not constant however the address is constant and of course we are we are exchanging or writing the data into into these so once we uh, change the values over here actually the values of n1 and n2 are changed let me compile this program And you see the values are swapped. Let us try to understand this on, on, on this terminal now. And let me let me rub some things over here. We have two variables n1 and n2 which are, which are local to main. And and over here we have two pointers and and pointer this points to this place and this points to this place so once we swap using these pointers the values of n1 and n2 inside the main are changed so that's why you see the swap occurs so well, gentlemen uh, you you need to be very clear on 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 the layout of stack if you want to understand the pointers let me write something for you the contents of stack frame contents of every stack frame when I say stack frame I mean activation records in some text you will find the term activation record in instead of stack frame there is always one stack frame that is active and that is the topmost stack frame so every stack frame contains the function arguments it contains the return address and it contains the local variables That are created inside inside that function other than uh, these there are two pointers that are used by the runtime system to manage the stack and the first is known as 
the stack pointer. Stack pointer points to the top of the stack. For example, if the top of the stack is over here, the stack pointer will be pointing over here. And there is a register, uh, if we talk about the Intel, that is ESP, which contains the address of the top of the stack. The other pointer is the base pointer. The base pointer points to the location within within the frame where the return address is saved. For example, if this is the return address, so the base pointer, which is in Intel EBP, this register contains the return address. Okay, so after having a fair idea of, of pointers and layout of the stack, you might be now very clear that the primary reason of, of passing data or arguments to function using pointer is that we want the function to allow the motive allow to modify the data. Let me write this thing as well. We use pointers to pass arguments to function because we want to allow the function to modify data. So you have seen how how this function swap one is passed the variables that were there in inside the main and using these pointer values this swap function has successfully changed these variables okay let me move ahead the next thing i want to discuss is the concept of constant. Dear students, in the previous session, we talked about the use of const keyword with pointers. Uh, let us revisit that concept with reference to functions. Uh, let me write it down. Passing <coughs> pointers, passing pointer to a constant. Suppose that we, we have a, a function f1 which is passed, suppose two values, both are integer pointers, The first argument, this one, it says n1 is a pointer to integer data that is constant. So n1 is a pointer to integer data that is constant, while n2 is a pointer to integer data. If I do something like this inside this function, let's suppose n2 is equal to n1. This is the dereference operator. What I am doing is I am assigning the value of n1 to n2. That is, I am writing n2, value of n2. So this is okay. However, if I if I do something like this, aesthetic n1 is equal to aesthetic n2. Or if I do something like this, aesthetic n1 plus plus, this is not okay. This is an error. This will say that we are trying to increment the read-only location n1. And this will give you an error that you cannot assign uh, to read-only location n1. Remember, if I do something like this, This is okay because over here the pointer is not constant and I am just increment the value of the pointer, value of the address. So over here 
we are talking about the constant data. Okay, so I, I just thought it appropriate that you should have an idea of using const keyword in the arguments of the function before moving ahead. Okay, so let's talk about now passing a 1D integer array to a function. Well, if you want to pass a 1D integer array to function, you have two options. Option one is <clears throat> you can use array notation. Use array notation. Let us suppose that we want to write a function that is passed an integer array. And the, that, that function displays the element of that array. So, <clears throat> let me name the array as prime, uh, function as print1. We need to pass the array of integer type. And of course, we need to pass the size of the array as well. And remember, size is constant. And it is very much required to pass the size of the integer array because we need to traverse and there is no way with us to find out how many elements are there in the array. However, this is not required in case of strings or character arrays which are terminated by the null because we can easily compute their size using functions like strlen. Oh, and inside this function, of course, uh, we can write down a loop till the size and we can we can print. Uh, let's talk about the second option. Uh, we can use pointer notation. Use pointer notation. Well, this is also very simple. Let's assume that the name of the function is print2 this time. So we write down int asterisk ptr. And of course, we need to pass the size of the array. And the same code goes over here as well. And if we want to call this, the calling is again very simple. We can call print1 or print2 whatever the name of the array and the size of the array. Let's suppose 5. Let me let me move on to the terminal and show you this. <clears throat> Passing, uh, I have written the code for you, for your convenience. Okay, so we have two functions. First function is using the array notation and the second function is using the pointer notation. The main function is calling both the functions. And over here you can, you can easily see uh, the two print functions. Uh, over here I have used pointer arithmetic. I can always use array subscript. And over here I have used array subscript. I, and I can always use pointer arithmetic. Remember, the array is created over here. The array is created over here in the stack frame of the main function. And its starting address, this one, is passed as an argument to the print function. The stack frame of the print functions receives the address and has the address of the location of the main stack where array memory is located and, 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 they, and they display that. Let me, let me compile this. 
and execute it and if you see this this is uh, displaying using both both the notations okay let me let me move back to to the board and take on a new board and show you passing a 2d integer array to a function well again we have we have a few options the most common option that one can use is you can use array notation let me uh, show you the array i assume that the array has been declared in the main uh, having four rows and three columns and containing data one two three four and so on to 12 and let me also write down the brief uh, memory layout which we discussed last time there are zero one two three four rows and one two and three these are the columns let me write down the values as well one two three four seven eight nine ten eleven and twelve okay fine so uh the function uh, which is going to receive this array let's suppose we write down the print function again it is arr sub over here gentlemen remember uh, for multi-dimensional arrays we we must give bound for all dimension except the first so this bound is not required however we we need to pass we need to pass this bound rows and this is the this is what the columns is so the rows need to be passed over here and the code is of course pretty same you just write down two loops and print the elements okay let's move on to the second option option two is use pointer to arrays we have touched upon this topic in the previous session if you haven't please go through with that the syntax of that print function will be int asterisk arr sub tree const int rows remember this says arr is a pointer to a 1d array of integers of size 3 and the code is again the same you can call both these functions as print one or two whatever the array and the number of rows which is four okay so there is a third way as well before going on to the terminal let me show you the third way as well option three option three passing a 2d integer array to function you can use a simple pointer simple pointer and the code for that will be print let's suppose three we just passed a pointer of type int but over here we need to pass the rows as well as the columns and 
in the code we have i is less than rows i plus plus and for j is equal to zero j is less than calls j plus plus and over here we have the print f statement and here we use pointer arithmetic like arr plus i into calls plus j and that is it so this is a bit tricky and then i have a new line and this is how i close and i call this function i call this function from main as print 3 sub 0 sub 0 a pointer to a simple 1d integer array number of rows and number of columns in rows we have 4 and in columns we have 3 let me try explaining you this a bit for the first time when this loop will run oh, we have a static arr plus i will contain 0 so we will have a 0 over here j will contain 0 so we will have a 0 over here so we have this which will of course point to the first location that is 1 second time i will remain 0 so this portion goes 0 j contains 1 so this is arr plus 1 which is of course arr plus 4 and and let me write it arr plus 4 this is arr plus 4 so whatever the arr address is 4 will be added in it and the third time we have again arr plus 0 plus 2 remember this portion is the calls arr plus 2 and this 2 this time means 8 4 to the 8 so this is the first iteration first iteration of the outer loop and we have i is equal to 0 and if I talk about the second iteration we have i1 so 1 into calls is calls is also 3 so 1 into 3 is 3 plus 0 then we have arr plus 3 plus 1 then we have arr plus 3 plus 2 and this is the second iteration when i is equal to 1 this comes out to be arr plus 3 which is of course 4 3 the 12 arr plus 12 this is arr plus 4 which is 4 for the 16 arr plus 16 this is arr plus 5 and so on well, this is quite elegant now let's move on to to the board and see this code running passing to the array so i will quickly go through this uh, we have uh, the three functions print one print two and print three uh, over here we are calling the print one function and print two function in the same way and we have over here called the uh, print three function and we have passed the columns as well as the rows Oops. this is the print one function i have explained on the board print two function i have explained on the board are simple and this is the print three function and this is the math you have to do at at your own time let me gcc this 2d array and let me run it and you see we have successfully displayed the contents of the array using uh, array notation using pointer uh, using pointer to an array and using simple pointer to int okay so uh, let me let me now show you how we can 
pass an array of character of strings to function. So one last thing that is passing an array of character of strings to function. Well, this is again not much tricky. Uh, the print function will look something like this. Character, pointer, names and the size or the number of rows and we will enter in a loop for count number of times and we will print and 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 we will we will call this function something like this from main for example names comma 5 and what this names is let me declare this as well names sub 5 and these are the names five names and let me change color and show you how this will be depicted in memory names having five pointers these five pointers are are pointing to to character of strings let's suppose first is rf backslash zero second is rauf rauf backslash zero and so on so zero one two three and four uh, this is what we see in the command line arguments of the mean function as well however the, the a bit of difference that that standard requires is that the last portion is a null we need to keep a null over here that is arg v sub arg c is equal to null okay so now we're done with this let's move on to the terminal and show you this code as well running uh, passing strings so you see this is how I have declared the string I have called the function and the function is receiving and displaying let me GCC passing strings dot C dot for slash a dot out and you see the strings are displayed okay Dear students, now that we have seen how to pass pointers to a function, let us conclude our discussion by understanding as as how we can how we can return a pointer from a function. Let me let me write it down. Returning a pointer from a function okay uh, let me move on to the terminal straight away and write it for you hopefully I will be able to uh, make it more clear to you from here uh, consider this piece of code <coughs> We have a main, a local variable in main a, which is passed to this function f1. This function f1 receives this variable and makes its scare and return the pointer to that variable. And the main function display the value. So uh, in this case, what we are doing is, we are <clears throat> returning a pointer to a local variable this is a local variable to f1 
we are returning the address of this variable in the return statement of f1. This variable is created in the stack frame of function f1. Once function f1 returned to main over here, its, its, its activation record or frame, stack frame is popped off the stack. <clears throat> you may say that this value is still accessible. Uh, however, it, it might be overwritten if another function is called and new frame is pushed onto the stack. Let me compile this program and see. The latest compilers give you, give you a warning on this. However, they do generate the executable and if I run the executable, I, I, I get a segmentation fault. So, must never return the address of a local variable from a function to the caller function or to the main. Another option is to make this local variable static. Let me make this variable static. This might work in, in, in this program. Let me, let me run it. You see? This will, this appears to be working, but this will work only in single threaded programs and may cause a race condition if multiple threads call this function f1. Our dear students, using global variables for returning values will also suffer from the same limitation. So what is the correct option? There are two correct options. The first is, we need to allocate memory within the function using malloc or new operator in the heap and return the address of that variable. Let's do that. Let me vim scare.c and instead of doing this, let me create memory inside the heap. I say malloc size of int. I just need one variable and I need to cast it back to integer pointer. So this is done. If this is Greek to you, please do see the man page of this or wait until the next session in which I give you an overview and working of heap. And over here, uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to dereference this result and place the scale of n1 in it. And then I'm going to return this. Uh, remember, result is a pointer. And so I'm returning a pointer. Over here, we have a pointer. And, and, and now we are done. This, this should work. This worked perfectly fine. Remember gentlemen, there is an issue with this program and that is we are not freeing the memory. Remember, in this case, the caller is responsible for deallocating the memory allocated by f1 function. The memory has been requested by f1 function, but it should be deallocated by, by, by the main, by the caller. So I need to call free on, on, on this address, which has been returned by f1. If I don't do this, uh, I may enter into a heap leakage issue. Okay, so one of the good option is whenever you want to return a pointer from a function, inside that function, you need to allocate memory on the heap and return the address that you are getting from the malloc function. Okay, what is the second option? What is the second correct option? The second correct option is that pass a pointer to, to, to a variable created in main to the function f1. What you do is 
you 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 create a simple variable a variable on the stack and you pass function f1 two values n a and a pointer of this inside this function we receive the integer value in n1 and we receive another pointer we don't need this line now and we need not to return and the return type may be white so try to understand we have declared a, a, a local variable inside the main and we have passed its its address to this function as a second argument this function computes the result and place the value at the address pointed to by this pointer which is of course there in the main and once it returns we can access this value over here and and of course rv is a simple variable so i don't need this and i don't need to free so let me compile this now So it's working so one option was that this function creates or allocates the memory for the result in the heap and the second was that the variable is created in the main this variable is passed as a pointer <coughs> sorry to function f1 over here the function f1 modifies the value pointed to by this variable in this case this function f1 may or may not return anything uh, you may like to return an integer with a value of 1 meaning success and 0 means failure as most of the system calls do so, uh, so these are the two ways of returning values from 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 functions okay students i think that is enough for today uh, there is one last thing I want to touch upon and that is pointers to functions or function pointers. This is uh, a bit tricky and uh, mostly not taught in the first year programming course. So we will uh, discuss this in detail inshallah in the next session. I wish you all the best. Happy coding and Allah Hafiz. <laughs>